Hello, Hello everybody. You know, Here. Big, big echo. Big echo, Roger. Mine the big echo? Yeah. All right. All right. How about we go back to this one? Uh, I don't know. You were do it was good and then you did something and now it's bad again. Well, oh, I talked. <laughs> Let me get the chat up here again. Hey, Rick is here. Well, he's lurking, I guess. Oh, no, I guess that's me, probably. Hey, Doug. Myrtle Beach. It's probably a little, little nicer weather there. Oh, it is. Yep. It is he is lurking. Yeah, yeah we had some wicked stuff, stuff here in Illinois, Illinois yesterday. I mean, wicked. wicked. Okay, you got to fix that microphone, man. Okay. Um, go to this one. Try again. Go to this one. Sound better? Uh, it was it was perfect before. What happened? It's, it's I don't still, know. Still echoey. Let me let me mute myself and try. Okay. okay. How does that sound? Any better? Or? It's it's not me and it's not Conrad. So it's got to be something in your system. You gotta either you got two mics wired up or. Or you're getting an echo off of something. Well, I could turn off the one mic right, completely. That, that's better. That's, that's okay. perfect, actually. Okay, well, I turned off the phantom power to this one. Yeah, okay. Well, it's perfect now. Oh, okay. We'll go with this. It might, yeah, it must have been two, two different mics running. All right, who do we got? We got Stephen on tonight. John, some of our crowd starting to roll in. Uh, welcome everybody. Uh, Rick is away tonight. He's he's celebrating a an occasion with his daughter tonight, so he he'll be either late or not here. And it doesn't look like Daniel's going to make it tonight. So it's just us. We can talk about lasers all night. And uh, Roger, you want to say anything? Oh no, you can bring up any CNC questions or three D printing questions as well. And yes, and Conrad's back. I'm here. We'll, we'll bring up the message. Apparently, you were missed last week. <laughs> uh, that's that's my bad. Uh, I was uh, my wife was on. She had traveled, and I was going. Oh, this is a good time for me to get some stuff done in the garage. And about nine thirty rolls by, and I go, Oh, it was Wednesday. Hmm. Oops. Uh, Stephen, am I echoing now? I'm not packing it up. Hmm. Are you picking up any echo, Conrad? No, um, just Rogers. It seems like his gain's a little high. I think I think that's Rogers' gain is high. Okay, yeah. let me uh, let's see, I turn that down some more. How's that? Uh, it seems to be better. I can't turn it down any farther. <laughs> no, nope, no, I'm good. I, it seems to be okay. Hey, Jack, uh, just a test, Jack. Can you hear any echo from any of us or all of us? Well, apparently, Timmy says the sound is good from him. All right. Um, well, Jim from Jim from Joliet. Yes, I am from Illinois. On the uh, Iowa, Illinois border. So you're about two and a half hours from me. What else we got here? More of a repeating, not an echo. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think it's, I think it's good now. I think it's good. Well, Steve is still saying it's an issue. Oh, no, now he's saying it's all good. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, technology is sometimes a challenge. A laser question. Here we go. Can I engrave with a 5-watt laser? Yes. And if you're engraving images, you can engrave better than, than most people. Just not on steel. had that question from uh, one of my viewers today. I, I bought a laser and I'm trying to engrave the steel and it won't do it. And what do I need to set it at? I said, well, it's not going to do it, period. Yeah. It's uh, it's a challenge. 
Yeah, definitely on on wood. If you're doing like a, a grayscale engrave with a five watt laser, you'll you'll get a pretty nice a nice engrave. Now you're probably going to be a hundred percent power because a five watt laser doesn't have a lot of oomph, but it has a really small beam. Okay, apparently we've got the echo fix now, so we'll have to blame the net internet gremlins for that. On tile, when I first started out uh, engraving ceramic tiles, I was using a five watt laser. Did it for well over a year for a, up to a larger one. Now, is that just with like titanium dioxide or are you actually engraving the surface of the tile? No, the titanium dioxide coating, you know, rust -oleum matte white. Yeah. Yeah, that's typically what I use. But Jan, are you using white tile and titanium dioxide? Yeah. What else we got going here? <laughs> oh, there you go. It wasn't us. It was it was Stephen tonight. <laughs> Finally, we can blame our problems on somebody else. <laughs> oh, okay. So yes. Oops. Are you clicking on messages, Conrad, or am I? Um, either way. No okay, problem. you you can do it. Just so that we we don't have a yeah. The uh, main thing to remember when you're if you're coating your tiles with uh, like I use rust -Oleum matte white uh, as a rule. Make sure you let them dry overnight. Don't like paint them and think they're dry and go right at it an hour later. Uh, your results will be less than stellar. Yeah. Yeah. Same same goes if you're just spraying titanium dioxide right on the tile directly. You gotta generally wait for. Uh, several hours at least because it uh, it seems to hold water. And that uh, the titanium dioxide is it's just a coating to put on the tile that lets you score the tile, or is it just take heat back off? Yeah, it's well, yeah, it doesn't. So typically, you use white paint because white paint has titanium dioxide in it. But if you don't like to clean up the mess, uh, well, it's a different mess, I guess, with titanium dioxide, but uh, it washes off with water. Um, but yeah, you just mix it with like alcohol or something and, sp and spray it on. It's, it's a bit of a challenge to, to spray it on because it, it doesn't dissolve in alcohol. It's just a suspension. So you have to spray it in a, with a nozzle that's big enough to get the titanium dioxide through it. But it works okay. And then once, I mean, once, I, it's, once it's I mean, on the tile, then the laser, that's what the laser bites into. Yeah. Yeah. It, 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 it reacts with the titanium dioxide and bonds it to the surface of the tile. Oh, if we get this to... it, It's too okay. great. It, it, oh, there you go. Hold it down. There, oh, yeah. there, oh. there we go. So that's what you could do uh, with uh, either titanium dioxide or white paint with a high titanium dioxide uh, coating okay. or content, okay. rather. So, yeah. so that actually then chemically reacts, and then you—that's what becomes your your printed surface, and then you just wash the unlasered stuff away. Yeah. Now, if you're using paint, you have to use some kind of mineral spirit to get it off. But I, I use acetone. But yeah. Thank you, Stephen. Just being an awesome show is enough. You don't have to pay necessarily, but welcome, welcome the the cash. Yeah, what's the power? To, uh, laser Master 2 Pro is a 10 watt laser, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 10 watt, you'd, you'd have no trouble. Oh, who else we got here? Uh, In fact, I do all of my, uh, all the tiles I do, I do on 10 watt lasers. Oh, yeah. I, 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 don't just have... get, I get a better result. I, I don't have room for for more than a couple of lasers on my workbench right now. Although although I finally got the P2 off of there, so that freed up a lot of space. I actually store my lasers on a shelf, a stacked shelf that's five high. And then I just, whenever I need to use a particular one, I have a different ones set up for different projects, so I don't have to rig them. Yeah, and it's kind of handy. Yeah. I, I'm I'm on a, in an ongoing quest to organize my workshop a little better, but it's just been crazy. 
what is the cost uh well that depends on the laser on the company a lot of things but uh you have to decide first of all i guess a better question is is an ir laser worth it and i don't know i've had mixed results with them the f1 is a nice laser but uh and actually the longer ir lasers laser module is pretty good just don't expect to uh do things real fast with the longer one yeah, or or don't expect to to do if you were here in previous weeks and you saw the coins that Rick was engraving with a sixty watt fiber laser. Don't expect to do that either. You'll you'll be able to engrave stainless steel fairly nicely. Las Vegas, three D HP. Is that three D hit points? Hmm. Yeah, I actually have uh, 17 lasers counting my CO2. Yeah, I got I I have a lot of them in storage and and I donate as many of them as I can to schools and maker clubs and stuff. So I try not to keep too many. If they're more than a year old, I I, I usually move them somewhere, but well, all of my grandsons have lasers now and then they didn't have to buy any of them. <laughs> yeah, I have a got a S1 Yep, he did. He and in the dying moments of of last week's live stream, he got it running, like literally the dying moments. It was like we're all getting ready to go, and finally I see his laser head moving. So, haven't heard back from him to see how it's going, but it, uh, yeah, he got it up and running. It's a twenty watt, which is a nice nice size for a laser. Uh, well, what's everybody been doing this week? All I've been doing this week is uh, shipping. It's, uh, <laughs> we have greenhouses, and it's spring, and we ship, and that's our main business here. And that's been what we've been doing all week. Uh, I've been I've been chasing customers. I well, I I was working with a buddy of mine to try and get his shop set up, his laser set up in his shop. But it's been it's been a different kind of busy this week. It hasn't been a lot of project work. I'm probably going to do. I was showing before we started. I was showing Roger the 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 CNC bowl that I turned a dish, and it's it's really just. It was a fun exercise. I actually have to do a demo for a bunch of wood turners, and they like round things. So I'm going to engrave a logo on the back of the dish or something, or maybe put a pattern on the rim. And I needed some samples. So that was my project this week. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, see, now, now I have some. I have some great grandchildren too. But Steve, you look just a little bit old to be one of my grandkids. <laughs> That's your, your extended family. <laughs> yeah, I, I do. You, you don't. Do you have a we create vision, Roger? You do, right? Yeah, yeah. Did you and try I the light done, support? Uh, I did from the what originally came with it. I did it once, and I thought this is not worth the trouble. Oh, then it's, the new light print support that they just released last week is really nice. I haven't had a chance to. Uh, I haven't even had a chance to use a laser this week. Oh, there you go, Stephen. Tried. How'd you like it? Yeah. I, uh, yeah, it, what's nice about it is you get a really good integration, like including autofocus and, and all the, the, you know, the typical sorts of things. They did actually a much better job than Xtool did. And I think it's because uh, they took a simpler approach with their laser design and Xtool was, took a pretty advanced Path and I think they're fighting their own technology to make it work properly in Lightburn. But yeah, it works really well. You don't get the camera though, which is unfortunate. But yeah, it just it, everything it, I did with it worked the way I would expect any laser to work in Lightburn, which was pleasant a pleasant surprise. I've got a few projects designed I wanted to do on. Uh... 
uh, one of them on the week create, but like I said, I just haven't had time this last week. I was waiting to see if Stephen responded to, to the light burn support. We'll, we'll wait for him. <laughs> No, that one I'm not familiar with. Yeah, I've got a com, I've got a com marker B4. That's a fiber laser. Uh, if you're engraving business cards, well, or drinkware, I guess uh, it'll be fine for that. Uh, but a 20 watt fiber laser is a little light for doing deep engraving. So you know, if you want to make medallions or things that look like coins, it's it's not the right laser for that, really. You can engrave down in brass. I've gotten down to about a millimeter deep, which doesn't sound like much, but it's a pretty significant dig into into the material. And that's a twenty watt B four. What was that? <laughs> now, uh, one of these days, I might give another one away. I've got to come up with a, actually a spare. And I may at one point uh, do a giveaway on the Ortur H10. I should dig through my stuff too. The challenge for me is it's a bit of a challenge to get it, to get it across borders. I mean, you do the same thing, right? You, you give it away in, in, in your local country. Yeah, that's what I had to do with the last one because the shipping would have been too high. Oh, that's because we create likes to give out their lasers to have us demonstrate them. Yeah, there's certainly that. Like, it seems like everybody's got one. Um, in the end, though, it's not a bad laser. I mean, people say good things about good products, and and I haven't heard any reviewers trash them. I've talked to a couple of people who bought them and had some out-of-the-box challenges with them, but one of them was camera alignment. Now I do see in the new firmware, they actually have a camera alignment option in the settings. So anybody who is having alignment problems uh, can now fix that issue. But yeah, there's definitely a lot of them out there. Yeah, you can do that. Yeah, that works. Spray either spray some white paint on your tile or some titanium dioxide and off you go. What are all these weird sounds I'm hearing? Are you hearing those? Uh, that one was my cell phone. Oh, oh I was going to say, I don't know what. I've got sound effects on my soundboard, but that's out of reach, really. Stupid phone. Uh, yes, we create is, is probably the best beginner laser I've seen. I don't know. What's your opinion, Roger? That was a very, very little learning curve on that one. Yeah, it's just assuming you didn't have any out of the box problems, uh, you can get the thing up and running in, I don't know, five minutes. It's basically actually, it, in and go. it takes longer to get the packing out of it than it does to uh, get it set up. <laughs> yeah, it comes in a pretty, pretty big box. Yeah, and that box is in a box, and there's tons of foam stuck all over inside it, and tape and stuff you got to all get off. There you go. You don't have a laser, do you, Conrad? I do not. Huh. How did that happen? I got my back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure Daniel can send you his Elegoo. He's he's much more mm -hmm. uh he seems much more excited about the S1 these days. Perhaps so. <laughs> the junkyard journal shop is back. Stuck on curve. In in uh, in in we create make it you mean the curve in there? Yeah, here's a here's a a, a regular user who has a we create make it who who I, my suggestion was just use the light burn integration and and he pleaded with me not to force him to learn light burn so.
Yeah, I don't I don't recall seeing uh, curve compensation in we create make it. Oh, are these the pre-made files off of their their project library? Because those, those presumably should, should, yeah, should. Those should just be plug and play and work. They should. The ones I've tried have worked pretty pretty good. Uh oh, she. Sorry. <laughs> it's it's easy in this business to think everybody's a male nerd. <clears throat> who knew there was who who knew there were female nerds? <laughs> oh well, oh, there's one problem files. right there. There's a problem because a lot of times the Etsy files are not really tested. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully they aren't my Etsy files. But I, I usually, well, I always build mine when I when I do a design, and I don't have too many designs up there. <laughs> well, I have a relative. Um, it's a male, and his name is Shirley. And he hates it, but don't call me Shirley. Uh, yeah, his mother mustn't have liked him or something, or wanted the wanted a daughter. Well, if you if you bought mine and you have trouble with them fitting together, let me know. But they should fit just fine if you cut them on a on a uh, we create. All right. Anybody? Uh, this is generally a Q and A, so if you got questions, just feel free to ask. Ask us anything, except where babies come from. Uh, well, th there isn't actually a, a whole lot of difference between a thirty watt fiber and a twenty watt fiber. Um, if you want to go beyond engraving things. Uh, with your fiber laser, then you're going to want like a 50 watt at least, 50 to 60. And be prepared because there's a big price jump usually between 30 and 50. But, you know, if you, uh, everybody's going to need more than one laser anyway. So you can buy the, buy the 30 do your engraving. And when you outgrow it, you can keep that one for engraving and buy another one for, for cutting or, or deep engraving. That wasn't me. <laughs> so I haven't heard a, we create fiber laser rumor. Um, but we create is, is coming out with an IR module for theirs. And I'm supposed to get one. I, I believe it's shipped, actually. So presumably in the next week or two, I should get it. What's the wattage output of theirs? Uh, it's a 2-watt standard. Two, the okay. standard just, two watt yeah, laser. just like longers? Yeah. Yeah, it's for probably the same same internals as, as what longer uses. <laughs> yes. Yes, it's a major jump in price. <laughs> So the IR module is for engraving metals pri primarily. So you, so know, you, you can you can get out all your gold and silver bullion and engrave on that. Yeah, just, actually, just for practice. <laughs> yeah, I actually marked up some of my old tools just to see how well it worked. Uh, yep. Just old dirty steel, and it, I was surprised how well it did. Yeah, have you have you tried removing rust from an old rusty tool with a yeah, fiber laser? Either. Yeah, it works not, well. Not with fiber, but the IR will take it off. Yeah. Just takes oh, it off. Well, yeah, an IR laser will do it too. Yeah, it's a it's a great way to to make all your old tools look new again. Yeah. A few people have said where they're from. If you're uh, if you haven't already posted it, let us know where you're coming calling from. 
or connecting from, I guess. Yeah, and IR will do that. Yep. Even if it's Chrome. It might actually be better if it's Chrome. Yeah, it, it shows up a little bit better than uh, just plain steel. Yep. I did. Uh, I put my name on a pair of channel locks that I carried in the trade for about 30 years. They're well-worn, and it still did it. Hey. Well, it's uh, 54 here right now, but it was like 80 yesterday. She's a neighbor of yours, Conrad. Syracuse? Yep. Oh, yeah. You're always oh, quiet. Right what part of Florida? I'm, I'm near Tampa. Steven's a West Coast guy. Longer lasers. Uh, so, uh, uh, Roger, has Longer been bugging you about about lasers lately? Yeah, they've wanted to. They keep wanting to send me another Ray Five to do a demo on, and I'm like, I've got two of them, and I've got to be one. Well, I don't want another one. I says I'll yeah. be glad to do a demo on if you let me give it away after the demo. But then I didn't get a reply after that. Yeah, I have that problem with Creality. They're sending me another Creality Falcon Two, a sixty watt. And I tried to dissuade them, but they were quite insistent. And it just, it's just like, okay, I'll, I'll do it. But it's going to be a short video because the laser frame is the same as the Falcon 2 40 watt and, and the Falcon 2 Pro. So people don't want to hear the same thing over and over again. A village called Belgium. Is it really, is it really the village? You're, I thought you were in France, actually. Or was it French Belgium? Ah, Syracuse. Not too far from where I used to live. Michigan. Oh, there's Darren, south south coast of Australia. Bet you uh, the weather's probably a little nicer there than where I am right now. Although it's actually not too bad here lately. Deland, where's that? Deland. Oh, in Florida. Yeah, between Orlando and Daytona. Oh, so you get to uh, you're you're halfway between Mickey Mouse and and the racetrack. Yeah. Yeah, close to Daytona. Yeah, I'm on Louisiana. Is in the eighties. I could say it's 12 degrees here, but only people in Europe would understand it's Celsius. Yeah. <laughs> Is there a laser that can engrave wine glasses? Uh, yes, a UV laser would do it. Actually, well, I don't think a fiber laser would do it without, without some kind of treatment on it, but a UV laser will engrave glass. Now, if you're looking at a UV laser, get your checkbook out because that one's going to be a big, big price. Oh, yeah. Those are way up there. And so that issue is because the laser likes to go through the clear glass? Yeah, well, blue lasers just pass right through it. So you can put, they, they do have these, like it's like a, like a slide off, you know, those slide off decals that you used to have or slide off tattoo, water slide tattoos. Um, they make a material like that that you can put on the glass and then you can engrave that onto it with a fiber or with a diode laser but i don't know it doesn't seem to work very well it seems kind of cleagey i've done it on glass with uh, uh cold gal spray and then of course you have to clean it all with acetone when you're done but you can do it engraved that way yeah and there's a molly lube uh crc makes it mm -hmm. if and it works real well too you just have to make sure you put something inside the glass because that light will refract everywhere. Yeah, so it's still something it'll, black inside it. It'll engrave the other side of the glass too. Yeah. How can you still be getting used to, to Florida weather after 35 years? Like they like to say, it's not the heat, it's the humidity. <laughs> yeah. 
95 degree day with a 95 percent humidity like you're swimming out of the car every day yeah well i i can sympathize i live in i live two miles from the ocean so my humidity is it, it's about 99 percent uh for 10 months of the year so well, for me, my advantage of my CO2 laser is that's all I do with it, is cut acrylic. Well, I do cut fabric once in a while, but it's mostly for clear acrylic, because I make a lot of uh, clear acrylic unicorns for a outfit here that does uh, craft projects with them. Yeah, I, I don't know if the only <laughs> advantage of a CO2 laser is the ability to cut acrylic, but that's definitely a big one. Um, and you know, if you spray metal, you can do stainless steel with with Surmark or or Molly spray. But the biggest advantage is that it's faster, quite a bit faster than than a diode laser doing the same job. If you're cutting, you know, quarter inch plywood, my ninety watt laser is generally faster than a CO two or than a diode laser would be. But I wouldn't underestimate the advantage of being able to cut acrylic. That's a big deal because everybody wants acrylic. There you go. It's all about Daytona. See? Ten million inhabitants, <clears throat> less than a decent American day. Yeah. Ten million is a quarter of the population of Canada. For a small town in India. Don't count the beavers. <laughs> my my entire province has only only a million people in it. You know, it's a small province, but it means it means I don't have to talk to too many neighbors. Well, that's kind of a loaded question. Uh, I guess it, again, it depends what you're going to do with it. Uh, longer B one is a good option. Uh, the mm -hmm. X tool S one. We yeah, create. If, depends if what you want to do. Laser, yeah. If I was if I was buying a laser, a, a diode laser today, assuming budget wasn't my first consideration, I'd probably buy an S one, an X tool. That doesn't mean necessarily it's the best. Because it does have its own set of issues, but it doesn't have very good light burn support, for example. Or if you're trying to do something you need to pass through, uh, you have to get the risers. To, mm -hmm. You're you're kind of limited on uh, how big of a project you can do with the S1. I mean, I do like my S1, but yeah. uh, if, if you're doing something like a long port sign, you're either going to have to get the risers at conveyor or get an open frame laser. Yeah, I'm interested to see the the we create conveyor because they took a slightly different approach. They don't have a riser. You basically lay this thing on the table and you put your laser on it. You take the take the bottom tray out and drop your laser on onto it. And and it's the conveyor. They don't have to worry about the rotary like Xtool does because the rotary fits inside. So I'm kind of eager to see how it goes. More importantly, uh, in I actually mentioned it in my my we create news video. Um, there's a bullet item on the conveyor marketing slide that says it will support most lasers on the market, most open frame lasers. So I'm actually kind of eager to see what that actually means because I don't know how they would handle that other than you disconnect maybe the Y axis and plug it into their thing and then tell it, tell Lightburn that your Y axis is, you know, 1300 millimeters or something. Yeah, that'll be interesting to see how that works. That's yeah. a good laser. I have one of those too. Yep. I, uh, I, I gave one of these to a friend of mine and then I convinced him to upgrade to the, Longer B one forty watt, and and he's less happy with me now. <laughs> he likes he likes this B thirty five better than the than the B one. He does a lot of uh, uh, what's the setting in in Lightburn the the other fill setting. 
uh, not the linear fill, the one where it goes in a circle and fills. The the B1 doesn't do that very well. Not the 40 watt anyway. Oh, offset fill? Yes. Uh, he does that quite often just because it's faster. And the B1 doesn't seem to do that very well. And I don't know if anybody has a B1 and they've tried offset fill. Let me know if it, if it works. Yes, everybody's ready to jump on me for offset fill now. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, this brain is old. Like it only has so much capacity. <laughs> okay, offset fill. If uh, for those that don't know what that is, uh, instead of your laser running on the x-axis back and forth continuously, uh, let's say you've got a picture frame and you're engraving a border around it, you want to use offset fill. That way, it follows that line, and it'll be a whole lot faster because it's not making those passes on the x-axis constantly. It'll do. A, you know, all the ones on the X and then all the ones on the Y, and there's a lot less travel involved. Uh, so this one, I usually just pick Baltic birch plywood if you're cutting plywood. Now, if it's hardwood, you're cutting, you can't go wrong with maple if you pick maple, if you don't know what type of wood it is. Um, Basically, if the wood is light, pick wall, pick maple. If it's dark, pick walnut, and you'll be fine. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. About the reflectivity of the of the wood. No, it's, it's more the hardness. Maple's pretty yeah. hard, right? So D density, uh, unless it's like uh, silver maple. But if you have a sugar maple or a hard maple, that's real dense wood. Yeah. Hello there. Hey. HVAC A to Z. Now well, the learning yep. curve to everything. Yeah. Feel free to watch all of our channels and ask questions, post comments in videos. Anytime you get lost, that's why we're here. Ah, well, what have you done this week, Roger? From a project perspective, anything exciting? Not a single thing other than trying to, I mentioned before we went live here, trying to put an eight-foot load through a seven-foot door. That didn't work too well. <laughs> so now you're, you're fixing doors tomorrow? No, I had to unload that entire pallet in the wind and mist to get my forklift back inside the shop. Oh, there you go. We've got a captive audience. Yeah. Can't be outside playing, say. Do nothing but watch YouTube. That's the way to go. Ah, I don't know. Roly Lasermatic. People seem to like it. I haven't heard anybody say too many. Actually, I heard one person say bad things about the Lasermatic, but in general, most people are seem to be pretty happy with it. Um, I had an I offer do... to... Uh... Oh, go go ahead. ahead. No, you go ahead. I had an offer to uh, accept one and do demonstrations and that, but it came with a contract, and I don't do contracts. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's the only thing I really worry about with the laser Matic is the sustainability of the company. Because they're competing with some pretty big monsters in the industry, and and as far as I know, their founder is still doing their, their first-line support, which is a not a scalable model so uh you know it's a tough business and the margins are pretty low so i guess if you want a good laser that may be backed by a company that may or may not be there it's probably fine if you if you're looking for you know to know you can send an email or pick up a phone then mm -hmm. you know get an x tool because they're going to be around but who makes the better laser i i don't know up between those two, they're probably both pretty good. V, B, A, East Tennessee. Must be a first timer. I, I don't recall seeing East Tennessee pop up in our, in our feed.
Mark 2, 20, 30, what? Yeah. Oh. Uh, here's a question for you, Roger. Oh, I don't know. Well, you live by a you live by a good fishing lake. <laughs> it's it's not so much a question as as you know you have yet another grandchild. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I like fishing in Wisconsin, so. <laughs> Uh, uh, uh. Oh. Yeah, it kind of all depends on what you learned on. You know, my, I've had Lagers for quite a few years, so it's kind of like when they first came out, along with the 3D printer thing, it, you, you learn that, and then you get something that's so simple to use that it was actually complicated when I first opened it up till I thought, you've got to think simple here. Yeah, it's... I. You know, I, I, I when I use the WeCreate, it takes me about two seconds to appreciate the camera. Um, like there isn't even a framing option on a WeCreate Vision. You can frame actually in in Lightburn, but but if you're using their their software, Make It software, there's no framing option. You just use the camera, and it's generally deadly accurate. And the fact that autofocus is there is another thing you forget until you have to go back to a different laser. <laughs> So yeah, I like the WeCreate. And I can see uh, some of the other laser manufacturers are probably gonna be copying that here pretty quick. Yeah, I think so. I know like WeCreate has sold a pile of those lasers. I know just from my own affiliate links um, that, uh, that uh, I, I would say a measurable percentage of people on my channel have WeCreate visions now. I have had uh, pretty good uh, affiliate results too with that. Yeah, yeah. It's just everybody's who's getting started, right? It's a fantastic mm -hmm. laser for that. Ah, just quiet. I'd say I'm quiet too, but I'm not. Oh, people talking to each other in our stream. That's oh, good. there we go. Uh, my boat isn't big enough for Lake Ontario. <laughs> I have to say close to shore. Just bring a life jacket. Go out on a calm day. Just watch the uh, Lakers. Backed up for months. Well, I, I the uh, uh, the carousel, the slide that they have, they just basically don't have any of those already. The pre-orders have been insane with those. Yeah, well, that's a, something to appreciate is is instant support. I've been uh, I've been in a bit of a support conversation with Creality now for almost two months, and it's like, come on, guys, how hard is this? <laughs> well, I've had nightmares with Creality on their three D printers and their support. It's it's just horrible. Yeah, they're just so like they just they don't source it right. Like it's understaffed and and. You know, this is a, I wish companies would learn that support is a big reason why people will buy their second laser from you. There is that. Yeah. <laughs> yep. The, uh, well, yeah, so Lightburn is out there now. Uh, I posted, actually, I posted a video with kind of the three pieces of news from, from WeCreate, if you can go watch that. But, the bed, the extension for the bed is there. Uh, I think it ships on May 12th and, uh, and light burn support is there today. You can, you can download it. Oh, there we go. That's an idea. Yeah, there you go. Now you've been, you're, yeah, and, you're, you're, you're tempting me now. Yeah, Except I can't can, get away from here in the summer. And you can take V V with you. She's she's a deep sea fisher, fisher person, fisherman, fisherwoman. I have such a hard time with the concept of a lake that's big enough. You know, around here, everything that's a lake you can see to the other side of you can probably throw a rock to the other side. <laughs> you know? and so when you when you go deep sea fishing, you know, you're going out like well for me it's the Gulf. You know, I got to the Gulf or 
into the Caribbean. Yeah, I've been out in the Caribbean. I mean, out where you don't even see land anymore. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's deep sea fishing. Yeah, it's not for me. I, I like I like to be on land. I can fish from shore quite happily. Word star, we're perfect. perfect. Oh my yeah, god! Yeah, I remember that. Busy big. I I used to use Word Star a lot in 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 my early days. Let's say when I was in my twenties. Yeah, Word Perfect was insane for all the crazy codes that you had to do for. It was anything but what you see is what you get. So once I finally learned WordPerfect, I had to learn DBase. I'm glad they don't use that anymore. Ashton Tate, whatever happened to those guys? Oh, 30 miles yeah, that, off. That'd be cool. For for me, that'd be cool. I don't get seasick or anything, so I, yeah, I could I could do that. If if I'm on a uh, a cruise liner, thirty miles might be okay. But... <laughs> <laughs> on any boat where I can walk from one side to the other in in a matter of seconds, yeah, it's not not my thing. Yeah, you definitely don't want to go on Lake Superior if you if you don't like big lakes. No, oh. Lake Ontario is pretty big. Superior is also quite cold. And deep, yeah. Yeah. I don't know if there's fish in the bottom of it, but there's places where it's almost, well, it's over a 1,000 feet deep in places. I watched a uh, video here, uh, one of the History Channel things about Superior never giving up its dead, and they said because it is so cold down there that the bodies from sunken ships are, those bodies are still intact down there. Ew. Yeah. That would be Probably a reason more than anybody not, wanted to know tonight, but <laughs> <laughs> that, that would be a reason not to ever dive on a ship in the in the early <laughs> scope fun 30. Oh, the extensions 48 by 48. That's pretty impressive. That's my uh, like my what I did with my Ray 5. It's yeah. on a you, four foot you did your, piece you, of plywood. You did your own extensions for it, though, right? No, I uh, bought I bought the kit? kit from Longer. So I had these big aluminum signs to do. Uh, coming up here, I got some more to do when the weather gets warm enough. I can set it up in the shop and have the doors open. Because you're not going to put that one in an enclosure. <laughs> I guess I could build the building over it. Yeah, build it, build, lay it down on concrete, and then put up a building around it. Yeah, I just, I don't know what I would do with a laser that big. CNC I get, but I don't generally eng laser engrave things that are too too big, certainly not bigger than a regular laser. Well, what I'm uh, engraving is powder-coated aluminum. And uh, it's, the, uh, it's the aluminum sheets they use when they make uh, race cars. Oh, well, yeah, neat. There's a shop here across the river that stocks it, so I buy the sheets of it and cut it down to the size I need for these signs and then uh, do the graphics and do the engraving. So it's like 16th inch material? Uh, I'm trying to remember how many mil it is. It's, it's actually in millimeters, it's like 1.3 yeah. or something like that. 16th of an inch, yeah. So it's flexible. Yeah, yeah, it bends pretty easy. Too bad I can't cut it on the laser. I have to cut it with my shear. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you just need a bigger laser. Yeah. Same with the boat. You just need a bigger boat. Well, got a 30-foot pontoon boat, but it's hard to trigger that around. Uh, yeah. And you don't have to. You can, you can leave from Lake Michigan and go up into Lake Ontario. Take oh, a while. No. But well, we're out on the Mississippi River a lot, and contrary to what a lot of people think, it can get rougher than hell out there. It's shallow, it's right? A, uh, it depends where you're at. The navigation channel, they try to keep it 17 feet, but I know of quite a few places on our pool that's over 30 feet deep. Hmm. 
I haven't tried. Have you tried the print and cut in light print? I haven't. I've I've never tried it. Wouldn't surprise me if it's unreliable, but the only thing I use print and cut on is my Cricut. Yeah, for me too. Vinyl. Yeah, that's what I use. Oh, it's a quiet crowd tonight. Everybody must be sleepy like I am. Ah. Oh, it doesn't hold positions. Hmm. Well, having never tried it, I can't really offer anything. Yeah. Seems like something I should do. Just to find out. Hmm. It was one of those things I, I heard about it and then and then just passed it by. And it's like I'm never gonna use that. Uh, I, I don't really have an application for it, so ten twenty AM. Australia. Australia. <laughs> no. <clears throat> on my bucket list, one of these days I'm gonna go down under. I just want to see water go down the drain the other direction. <laughs> you know, you can just take like a wooden spoon and stir your own water and save the yeah. fight, right? <laughs> eh. Give it a try. If uh you know, if it doesn't work, the light burn guys are actually pretty responsive for fixing bugs. So, but there's probably somebody else who's run into this problem already. If it, if it's not working, pen jigs. Yep. Yeah. Never done any pens. I did do some pencils. I haven't gone to a toothpick though. <laughs> or a grain of rice. Yeah. Oh no. <clears throat> That was a fun. That was a fun project. It's all good, good, good sport. Yeah, hobo with wood. I think yeah, he did a cut and print video just recently on this, or fairly recently. Oh, and it green raved off about two inches. Hmm. Huh. I don't think the extensions would make any difference to that. Hmm. Well, if it's in, if you cut the jig and then things are engraving off, the jig is obviously not in the right place. Or you something happen, else is, are well, you using it, absolute coordinates or are you using a, what what do your is your setting there? I use absolute coordinates for almost everything. Yeah, I do too. No, I'm thinking if you started with a whole sheet of material and then you put you cut out your jig two inches in from from the border, and then assume that that's where it is, it's probably going to be out by that much, right? So you may have to move it. The things the things we run into in this business. Lasers lasers can be hard sometimes. That's there again. I, I would say if you're using absolute coordinates, that would never happen. Yeah. It shouldn't. Suddenly it's accurate. Uh the mystery problem just fixed itself. One millimeter above the position. Huh. Hmm. Possible the possible it wasn't at zero zero when you made the markings. It wasn't like it wasn't exactly at, at the home position. Yeah, Daniel stood us up. I weep. He did say he'd he'd miss the occasional Wednesday. He's a busy guy. Yeah, I I haven't heard anything else about Millmage after 
there was a bit of chatter after their conference back in when was that February, and then they went dark. I think they probably are realizing that CNC software is hard and it's probably taking longer than they expected. Everybody but, has a feature that they have to have that no one else thought was necessary. No, no, what was necessary? In development, I found that everyone thinks that the, the feature they want has to be there. And that all the other features aren't necessary. Well, yeah. When when I was in in uh, in in my my daytime job, I was a I was a director in a software company, and and I would have software engineers tell me how hard something was. When product management asked for a feature, they go, "Well, it's so hard." And I would look at them straight faced and say, "But it's just typing," and then run from the room quick. <laughs> Yeah, you always want a home before, well, in general, oh. always, but if you're doing, especially if you're doing something that requires accuracy, you want to make sure you know where you're starting from. Uh, S30 with alignment. Yeah, you should home after every job anyway. Yeah, I always do. Yeah. Especially because there's always a tendency to to manually move the laser head out of the way, and and then you forget that you've moved it. And the only only oh. laser that that knows where it where it is, even if you do it move it manually, is the S1, which makes it perfect for me because I always do dumb things like that. And I have made the mistake of just when I'm taking the, the project off, is just bumping the head a little bit, my elbow or something. Well, then it yeah. throws it off. So I always home every before I start every project. Yeah, takes takes seconds. It's worth it. Third quarter for Mill Mage. They originally said early in first quarter. I guess it was October. Their conference was, and uh, they said Q one. This is clearly a, a software project. <laughs> Throw out a random date and then keep moving it. Yeah, so I have I have uh, VCar version twelve installed now, and there's some nice features in there. The inlay feature uh, is fantastic compared to what you used to have to do. You used to have to do a lot of mental math yourself to to do inlays to do the the plug in the in the pins, and they made it all turnkey. Like it it'll do both sides of the. You can do both sides of the the inlay out at once if you want, if it's the same material. So yeah, it's super cool. I've been using it. Well, I use, I use VCAR 12 for this. Not that that matters because it's all pretty straightforward, but, but uh, yeah, it's, it, it was a nice update. I got mine for free because I bought mine after the, their cutoff date. But I think even if you have to pay, it's like $149, which is cheap by comparison to what I originally paid for it, or a hundred bucks or something. Yep, moving it a little. It'll yep. kill you every time. I'll probably do a video on on how to engrave these these plates. I've seen people who engrave, you know, bowls. Well, they call them bowls, but really all they're doing is taking a bowl bit and turning out something flat and this is contoured the whole way like it's a proper dish so i may i may do a video just to show people how i did it ah florida everybody has a pet alligator in florida right they don't have to put pets you get a new one every year <laughs> Yeah. I'm wondering if they actually have a different software team working on the CNC version than their um, team they work with the regular light burn. I don't know if they're even big enough to have two software teams. They're a pretty small company, right? 
it's they did say that that uh they were probably going to it, it might be slowed down because they were working on on some light burn updates and clearly that has become their reality they're learning the painful the painful reality of having two products in your company now Oh, it's possible. Lightburn has a few interesting bugs on some lasers. Well, it, it could be the laser, of course, but. Yeah, I've heard a couple people say that repeatability is sometimes a challenge, but that's probably not Lightburn. That's probably the laser. Especially if you're, one of your belts happens to be missing a tooth. Yeah, you know, or even if it's loose, yeah, it, it'll get sloppy, right? Well, we're, we're making connections. That's awesome. <laughs> Big bear problem. You don't know bears until you come to Canada. <laughs> somebody up, well, somebody, somebody up the street from me was complaining that the uh, that bears were getting into their uh, their bins well the only bears we have here in illinois are chicago bears and they're pretty much harmless <laughs> well, at least you didn't say at least you didn't say useless <laughs> <laughs> i'm a bears fan too die hard but man have to keep reliving 1985. <laughs> the last time they had any significant victory that's when I won their last Super Bowl. Yeah, if 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 anyone follows hockey, they'll know they'll know the misery of the Toronto Maple Leafs. I was, I think, three years old the last time they won the Stanley Cup. But every year, fans line up, or they're, they're dedicated. Go sports ball. <laughs> Well, the Lightning has a relatively reasonable hockey team. Well, yeah. Or, why there's a hockey team in Florida, but there is one. Yeah, Tampa, yeah. Second position. Well, back up there a minute here. Oh, oh, oh hang on. Yeah, before. Well, I can tell you, like right here, if you're off on second position, it's going to sound terrible. <laughs> Got all this information at his fingertips. Uh. <laughs> what do we got here? Ah, oh, we've started a conversation. Oh yes, there's definitely light burn X tool issues. Um, it's not light burn though. So the way X tool implemented their light burn support is they built an emulation layer for, for light burn for G code on top of their own laser interface. That's why in, if you're using X tool, an X tool laser in light burn, you can't change any of the machine settings. You can change them for that session, but the second you close light burn or, or, uh, or turn your laser off, their settings have all been returned to what came out of Xtool. Uh, it frustrates me to no end because I like accuracy. Sometimes I make things that require hyper accuracy and you just can't do it very easily with the Xtool. Another odd thing I've found with uh, Lightburn and Xtool is if I, in Lightburn, I create a project for a, oh, and one of my Xtool lasers, and then I save that project and open it up. And let's say for a, on my Fortier laser, my images are backwards and upside down. And I have to flip them all. Yeah, that's because their their home is in the upper left corner yeah. instead of the lower left. Yeah, yeah drives, drives me crazy. Yeah, I'm not sure why they did that, but uh, you know, it's for most people on the planet, lower left is is the home position right so thursday night topics yes bears with lasers stay out of your backyard at night this is hang on let's still 
Yeah, I'm actually interested in this too. How how they how to install the IR laser because their current laser module is not it's not like a one screw removal. It's it's a disassembly by the looks of things. So it'll be interesting to see. That's one thing nice about swapping on the longer. It's just literally swapping the module. Yeah. It's just yeah. that easy. Yeah, it takes seconds. Yeah, I'm wondering if they haven't just, if the IR, it's not like, like say, uh, an F1 where you have one laser module that has an IR and a diode laser in it. I wonder if they've done it that way. Time will tell. We'll see. I'll let everyone know when I get one. <laughs> no, it's Thursday here. <clears throat> Crash Course and Lightburn. Well, there's many of them. Uh, go to Rich's channel, Louisiana Hobby Guy. He's got lots of Lightburn videos. Yeah, Rich is real good at uh, walking you through the very, very basics. And Lightburn also has their own support videos. Yes. Yeah, Lightburn has a, has a good set of them as well. Ah, what else is happening? There's a lull in the traffic on the on the chat here. Oh, <clears throat> what's upcoming in in on your side other than plants and fishing? Uh, well, I, like I say, I've got some projects designed. I just need to find the time to uh, make the videos. <laughs> yeah, I have the same issue sometimes. Spring is just brutal for trying to get things done. So there yeah there goes my weekend take a break i'd say go for a walk but if you got a wounded foot you can't so no. just keep watching videos <laughs> there you go Sounds like people are lining up for drinks after. Yeah, I got a, quite a few projects I have to get done. I've been still kind of tweaking my studio here, so it's been been crazy. I've also been playing with uh, with DaVinci Resolve 19 for editing because it does some a couple of neat things that I, I want to do going forward in my well, all, always is. quest to improve things. So I don't have I don't, video, I don't right? have the fancy Hollywood setup that you have. <laughs> That's straight up Hollywood theater there. Yeah. Yeah, like yeah. like this. I was showing you before we went live here. I can zoom this in and I can pan the cameras and. Steady cam on the. Uh... So anybody's interested on what's on the other side of the uh, room I'm in up here, I could spin this all the way around. I can zoom it back out. Paint That's is where all the my, answer. That's all my heat presses are. So it's, yeah, it's kind of a fancy toy. You have a cam mounted, a steady cam mounted on a drone? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's why, this that's is, why he always has those mystery noises. He's got a drone flying in his, in his studio. Uh, yeah, so that's fun, fun little toy to play with. Yeah, there's a there is a new version of Make It coming as well. <clears throat> they're uh, they're working hard. They're probably the hardest working guys in the in the laser business right now. We create. <laughs> well, yeah, you'll have that. <clears throat> so, yeah, this is this this happens with CNCs too. You, you always end up with a bunch of a bunch of wood. I keep a box down beside my CNC, and it's basically firewood. I give it to my brother when when it gets full. He has a fireplace and a and an outside fire pit, so he's quite happy that I have a CNC. 
Oh, here we go. Everybody wants more time. I wish I had more time too. Yeah, you know, I had to. I, would, I had to. I had. I had to quit my day job, and and now I still wonder how I ever did that because I'm still too busy. My air conditioner never gets turned off. <laughs> there's, there's four, five days a year where the uh, ambient temperature is enough that I don't have to turn on the AC. Yeah, four cold a, days a year. That's a reason not to live in Florida because because that's the cold end. The hot end is probably like 100 degrees, right? Yeah, it's, it's during the summer. It's 90 plus from eight o'clock through to nine o'clock at night. Yes, expensive lessons, firewood. Oh, yes. See, see, this is my worry with, with Lightburn, right? They were kind of sitting on their haunches there for a while, not keeping up to date. And now all these laser companies have said, well, we're going to build our own. So now you've got Creality and Xtool, which between them are the two biggest tech appliance companies and now we create didn't even try to support lightburn until long after they've released their own software so i think this is a trend and it's it's because they can innovate now right they can add a new feature and support it in their own software eighty nine degrees Eesh. With a hundred percent humidity, of course. Mm -hmm. Ah, what That's else is happening, Roger? The hurricane season. At least we have a breeze. Yeah, well, we don't have we don't have hurricanes here, but there was a tornado yesterday. EF two tornado about uh, ten miles from where I live, so it was a little scary last night. Hmm. I don't get I don't get tornadoes where I live, but I get hurricanes. Two, week, two weeks after I moved in from the middle part of the country, we got Hurricane Dorian five years ago. And that was a, it was a category four that quickly turned into a category three just before it made landfall. And landfall is within sight of my house almost. So um, I, I kept the, the official iPath map because the iPath goes across the end of my street hurricanes are not fun it's like a it's like a tornado that lasts for eight hours yeah use all your cardboard yeah if you buy stuff from amazon you'll have an ample supply yeah or go dumpster diving behind behind stores you'll find lots of cardboard Yeah, I use I use a lot of cardboard for prototyping. Uh, most cardboard is conveniently three millimeters yeah. thick, so it, it's perfect for for what you would use eighth inch plywood for. Now, well, as long as you turn the power down and up the speed, you'll be fine. Yeah. Yeah, just. Just keep a, your fire extinguisher close at hand. I've never really had a fire. I've, I've certainly toasted my share of cardboard, but I've never really had a fire. I won't say it's not a, it's, it's not a significant event, but it just doesn't seem to be as prevalent as people like to think. <laughs> <laughs> you just have to knock first. <laughs> We have around here more than bears or coons. We got raccoons everywhere around here. Yeah, we don't. I don't have too many around me. I'm surprised because they're around. And they just don't don't show up here. Bears, bobcats, <clears throat> lots of deer. We've actually had raccoons come up and right up to the edge of the hot zone when we're in it, and that'll make you jump. It's a little close. Yep. Yep, that's true. 
Don't, you don't want to use dry chemical because then you'll have a mess. Yeah, it's brutal to try and clean some of that up. Better install a halon system. <laughs> well, that's fine as yeah, long as you don't want to breathe. <laughs> but then you need an oxygen mask, Andy. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, we're solving the world's problems. No, Algo laser, Algo laser has not. I, they're not. I don't think they're going to release a thirty watt. I think they're going to go right to forty. They've been working on it. They did say when I talked to them a while back at the beginning of the year, they said they were looking at having it in March. Well, it's now the end of April, so yeah, it's probably probably a software problem. I don't know. But I, th I think they're going to go right to 40. Okay, this is getting creepy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can use just a water bottle. Most things you're going to cook in a laser are, are you can put out with, with water anyway. It's just the water can go everywhere and you have to be careful. But if you have a squirt bottle, you can aim it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I can't be squirting water on anything electronic. Yeah, well, the as long as you keep it off the laser module, there's not a lot of electronics around where you're cutting. Generally, if you're using air assist, uh, it'll actually blow the fire out. Yeah, usually, the, if you have air assist, you generally don't get fires. Oh, yes. Here's another hard lesson in life. Yeah. Auto <laughs> autocorrect. The best, worst invention ever. <laughs> I'm continually, I, I have fat fingers, so I continually type messages on my phone and, and all the words are correct, but they don't make sense. <laughs> so the Creality Falcon 2 can switch. Um, I have a feeling when Algo Laser comes out with their 40, it'll probably just switch automatically. Uh, their 20 watt does. So if you're using lower power, it'll it'll turn off some of the lasers, which will make the beam smaller. I'm trying to remember the last time I used my algo, I've got one. It's on the bottom shelf, uh, collecting dust. Yeah, I haven't. I was I. I have one sitting in my shop because Algo Laser said they were gonna they were gonna get a 40 watt laser to me in March. And I'm getting tired of it, so I may shove it over into storage. But there are a couple of lasers that you can switch from from 40 down to 20 or or, or 10 even 20 usually. I'm trying to think of others others than the Creality. Oh, there you go. There's one, the Roly. You can do it. Uh, we talked a bit about the pass through. It's not really a pass through. It's a it's a carousel. So you drop your laser on top of it, and it has rollers to move the material in and out of the laser space. Um, it it looks interesting, actually. I I'm I'm interested to see it. I'm more interested to try it on a laser that isn't a WeCreate. And it's priced right, I think. Anyway, if you want the the short version of it, it's like three hundred bucks. Yeah, Rolly. Be interesting to take a straw poll to see how many people on this call have we creates. It sounds like it's a lot. 
Yeah, so reality is going to send me a 60 watt laser, so I'll be able to confirm this at some point in the not too distant future. Um, but yeah, that makes sense that they would switch down as far down as 20. I thought the power wars were over, actually. I'm not sure why reality wants to come out with a 60 watt laser now. If they do, they better speed up their laser. Yeah, I just, I, I, I'd like to believe that that was just a, a marketing slip up that they announced that they could support other lasers, but I, I'm interested to see it. Yeah, for me, that saying of being universal is kind of like the one size fits all. Yeah, so it may do a bad job at all lasers, who knows. Yeah, the number they threw out was like 99% of the open frame lasers that are out there. That's a lot of lasers. Yeah, so if I get one, I'll definitely try this and, and post it in a video. Because that would make a significant difference for for them, I think, from a from a user adoption perspective. Because lots of people would love to have a carousel, but don't want to shell out all the cash for a, for an X two S one or something. But I don't know how they would mount because so many of these lasers are different sizes, right? Like like how do they mount it? That and so many of them have different mounting feet, and I know because I 3D print feet for them. <laughs> yes. Uh, there's a lot of different ones. Yeah, maybe they've come out with some some adapters. Have you been secretly printing th 3D feet for Recreate? I've done, uh, I just, actually, I just pulled some off a printer. And doing? this one here is, uh, oh, get that turned around, you see it. That's a 50 millimeter riser for a Jakota laser. And that's the mount for it right there. See how that mounts. Mm -hmm. You know, every laser is different. Yeah, that's, well, there's that and the the yeah. outside dimensions of every laser are different too, right? So. Yeah. Like, that's why I have so many different layout grids on my site for <laughs> download. Yeah. You know, they're that and they'll, they'll say it's got a 400 millimeter square working area, but it's actually 398 by 397. So then a 400 millimeter grid won't work. Yeah. So, yeah. All depends if you're listening to marketing or engineering when you're when you're asking the dimensions, right? The marketing guys will try and make it as enticing as possible. We'll round sure. it up. It's three feet by three feet, and when you get it, it's 18 inches. <laughs> yeah. Well, Steve, was glad having you on there. Yeah, he's a he's a diehard. That's awesome. Yeah, it is going to be intriguing to see to see how they fit this because I, there's going to be. Like there'll be all kinds of weird alignment issues, I think. I don't know. Unless they have just like you do, a set of feet for or a set of some kind of mounting brackets for every kind of laser. I've got a shelf up here. It's an old TV entertainment center with uh plastic bins on it for all these different laser mounts. <laughs> and there's uh let's see this one. There's twenty one of them. So there's 21 different mounts that I have so far. I'm sure there's others that I have never made uh, mounts for. Now, are they all current or are some of those maybe obsolete lasers now? Oh, uh, like the, I still like the Ortur Laser Master 2 Pro and the Laser Master 1. I still occasionally will sell a set of uh, feet and risers for those, but not so much anymore. The most popular one is the uh, longer Ray 5 mount. Yeah, longer sold a lot of those. Do all popular lasers have limit switches? Uh, the good ones do. I won't say all of them do, but uh, yeah, it's it's definitely becoming more popular now. Uh, most, I would say, most new lasers will have them. 
or if they don't have limit switches, they'll have current detection on on the steppers. And, but uh, older my, lasers, uh, lots of older lasers didn't. My Laser Master Three or Tur has a the current limiting sensing stepper motors. Yeah, which was odd for that era, right? <laughs> I mean, we're talking two years ago, but but most most didn't even have limit switches at all or any kind of limit detection you basically position the laser head where you want it to start working so i don't i hope people appreciate how far we've come in the last year or two uh, well other than wavelength it's, it's yeah, mostly going to do with it yeah it's mostly about wavelength is the primary difference one is is probably in the 300 nanometer range and the other one is is in the thousand nanometer range um so opposite ends of the spectrum but uh price is definitely another difference uv lasers fiber lasers are expensive uv lasers are off the charts they're getting they're coming down though fairly quickly but they're still quite expensive and a CO2 laser kind of falls between the diode and the fiber price-wise. Yeah. Unless you're going to get really big. Yeah. Well, one one reason for buying a CO2 would be to be able to do big jobs. But like my CO2 lasers, two feet by three feet is the bed area. Which <laughs> handles most of the jobs I have to do, but. Well, since I only make unicorns on mine, I've got a, it's a the Monport 40 watt and it does just fine for it. So. Yeah. How do you like the Monport? Uh, I have had, well, I can't say I've had zero issues because the temperature uh, displays they send with them are just junk. But I replace those with little digital Amazon things. And other than that, I have a spare tube for it. I've never had to change it though. Hmm. I did have changed lens once. But otherwise, it's uh, other than just normal maintenance and alignment, it works just fine. They they were asking me to to take an eighty watt CO two laser for for a review, and it's like I just I don't have room for that in my shop. And I was still to this day, I'm still expecting it to arrive, in spite of the fact I said don't ship it to me. <laughs> I wouldn't have room for that. Stop yeah. sending me all this free stuff. Yeah, it's it's not free if you have to build a new building to put it in. No, I just so I, I've kind of convinced them to send me a, a fiber laser. So as I have a, quite a few people asking about fiber lasers now. Yeah, UV lasers. So I ironically, when I started my career, I worked for a laser company building UV lasers. And uh, here they are again. They've made a comeback. Now, the lasers I was working on were industrial lasers, so they were huge. But Yep. So I wanted a big CO2 laser, so I just built my own. And it has become the workhorse in my workshop. I use it for anything, any big jobs I have, I use that. <laughs> yeah, don't say that. You also have to get it through the door. So if you if you ever do order a big CO2 laser, check the outer dimensions very carefully. I talked to somebody a while back, a couple of years ago, who bought a CO2 laser and wanted to put it in their basement and it wouldn't fit. So they actually had to cut out the foundation and put a, an outside entrance into their basement to, uh, to get it down there. That's a pretty big expansion just to put a laser down there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, this is so. This one must be directed at you, Roger. You're the collector of grandchildren, family members. Oh, yeah. Uh, some of the free stuff. I mean, I get offers to everything from bamboo underwear to hair straighteners. Like I need that. 
<laughs> to uh, latest thing I got, uh, I think it was this morning, was uh, a weed whacker of some, like a weed whacker lawnmower conversion all in one. I, I'm not going to screw with that. Yeah, I got I get some weird ones too. The one I was tempted to jump on though was somebody was trying to get me to look at a, a TIG welder. <laughs> and it's like some Chinese company, and it's like while it would be very cool to have a TIG welder, I don't I don't really need one. And it's probably not really that interesting to the people who watch my channel. <laughs> These are, I assume, the horror stories around having things that don't fit in your house. I do some off the wall things once in a while. Uh, I just did a review on a uh, Bissell pet stain remover that I actually I bought to uh, clean a, a grandson's car. There's a person he bought it from had dogs and they kind of peed everywhere. And I was surprised how well this thing works, so I did a video on it. Hmm. Yes. Yeah, buy in bulk. Although I went, I, w I went to the local wood store the other day, and I bought a, a, an eight foot two by well eight quarter pieces of maple and walnut because I'm going to make another chess set, and it was outrageously expensive. Like it hurt, <laughs> and I, I was not happy when they handed me the bill and said, oh, it's 500 and some dollars. There was a couple of other things I bought too, but it was it, it was probably $100 more than the last time I bought it, which was only at Christmas time, December or March or November. It's depressing. Even buying in bulk sometime, you get pricey. Uh, that big pallet I was telling about we had today, that was all cardboard boxes. $1,500 worth. Yeah, enough cardboard for you to cut things forever. Yeah, so of course, we ship and all that stuff, and but it always hurts when I have to buy another pallet of boxes. Yeah, especially when you know most of them are just going to end up in a landfill somewhere, right? Yeah, or somebody used them on their laser. <laughs> yeah, if it, if it goes to that cause, then it's worthy. <clears throat> yeah. There you go. Print the schematic on the inside of the bonus label, like cereal boxes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, cereal boxes work well. It's a little flexible, and and it doesn't. So, car, the reason cardboard boxes are nice is because they're roughly the same thickness as plywood, right? So, if you're putting anything together, you can you can at least test assemble it in cardboard before you cut the you know the the firewood, the future firewood. So, so uh, you're not going to forward free stuff to, to just me, Roger? Uh, no, I'll uh, <clears throat> keep my grandkids supplied, like with <laughs> miniature chainsaws. I think every one of them has one of those now. I've done a lot of reviews on those because something we use here, but I don't need 20 of them. See, see, when you say grandchildren, I'm thinking like five-year-olds, and you've equipped them all with portable chainsaws. <laughs> no, my, my grandchildren are, like I said, I have great-grandchildren, so... Uh, my uh, youngest grandson is uh, 17. Oh, he should be able to handle a portable chainsaw. Yeah. Those are those little handheld ones with the really short blade on them? Yeah, and they, they work surprisingly well. For branching, for they are. cutting branches and stuff? Training. Yeah. So, I mean, you're not going to be a lumberjack and fell on trees with them, but for pruning and cutting up little stuff, they're great. Uh, scratch paper, man. It's become one of my favorite materials. I actually found a place that sold all kinds of weird patterns and colors of scratch paper. <laughs> and I have to go and dig it out because it's, it's worth noting. Uh, because I've only seen the stuff with a white background and the rainbow stuff. Now I've got a whole pack of it. I still haven't played with. So the thing you'll appreciate about it is it engraves really well. Like if if I could get that kind of engraving on 
on a, a piece of plywood, I would I would just spend my days making photographs on plywood. Uh, it, it's it's just amazing how well it works, and it takes almost no power, like twenty five percent on a typical laser, and and uh, so and or you can go with more power and really move along, so you can do engraving really quickly, and it's cheap, like it's like a, pennies a sheet. The only downside is you do have to clear coat it after spray some clear spray paint on it. And that protects it, but other than that, I can I can I can live with that one sacrifice because it, it's just such a nice material to work with. All right, peeps. Any any uh, anyone else got any questions? We still have you know, about twenty minutes, twenty five minutes. Anything you want us to do on our channels? Let's say that's another question. Like any projects you'd like to see, or lasers, or CNCs, or three D printers, or pet pet cleaners. Yeah, clean it up after pets. Pet carpet cleaners. I usually keep a, a long list every time I come up with an idea and I want to do some some video i'll just write write it down and i have a long list of them but the, the sad thing is i rarely have time to do proper projects these days which drives me a bit crazy because projects are way more fun than most of the things i do Well, I guess uh, well, we got a little bit here. I can throw a little something out there about uh, people that are building things and selling them and then shipping mm -hmm. them. Um, if Let's say you're using the Postal Service and you're, you're going to send a priority mail and it weighs two pounds. Well, you need to put the box size in. If that two-pound thing is in a, let's say, a box at a seven-inch cube, it'll go by what they call cubic. But if that two pound thing, uh, then it'll cost you like $8. But if that two pound thing is in a box, it's let's say four by four by 36, now you're shipping $14. So that's something to keep in mind if you're making things to ship and you're using the uh, either, well, even uh, UPS and FedEx are now going by what they call dimensional weight. So they, they want the box size and they have minimum charges for that amount of what they call cubic area. Is something to keep in mind if you're shipping stuff. Yeah, it's I don't know. It's it seems like everybody's trying to find ways to screw us over. So if you're going to ship a long skinny thing, make it in two parts and and put an assembly guide in in with the box in the box, right? Because you'll save shipping. On multi-layer signs, um, no. So if I well, uh, let me see. If I'm making a multi-layer sign, it's typically acrylic. So I'll have just multiple layers of acrylic. Um, I I don't know. Like a paper really wouldn't make a a, a, a good sign from durability unless it's like something you're going to post on a bulletin board or something. But, um. But yeah, I don't know. Between, well, I guess, let me re-ask the question: Is is the are the layers? What are these layers made of? In this question, are they acrylic? Or are they wood? Or even paper? I guess. I've done a lot of uh, multi-layer wood projects that I paint different colors and. Of course, uh, if I do something with paper, I'll do it on the Cricut. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, I, I've i learned. And so one of the nice things that, that lasers can do for you is if you're doing, um, you know, if you're layering something with lots of different parts, like so, say you're doing, a, I don't know, a parrot, something colorful, and you've got a whole bunch of parts that are all different colors, paint the material first and then cut it. Um, 
you can do that with lasers. Uh, it's much harder if, if, if you're doing it by hand and then you have to try and figure out how to individually paint all these things. So um, lasers do make some things easier. Like I did that inlay of the hummingbird a while back and, and I painted everything first and then, and then cut it. Ah, uh, this one is an interesting question. Um, depends on the laser. Diode lasers need less maintenance than CO2 lasers. Fiber lasers, also, as near as I can tell, don't need any maintenance. I'll throw this in there. If you're going to let your laser like this sit around for a long time, and then you're going to want to go to use it, check your belt tension. Hmm. Because that will change all on its own. Those belts stretch out, and then all of a sudden you got loose belts. And then things get wobbly. And if you don't keep your belts too tight, or your eccentrics too tight, or you'll end up with flat spots on your rollers if it's stored for a long time. Guess how I know that? <laughs> Show us the scars. <laughs> yeah. I, I keep a, a supply of the little rollers in a drawer. Yeah. If the rollers on a laser are the same they have on these 3D printers here. Yep. So I, I have a good stock of them. Yeah, I have a bag full of those someplace. And as far as cleaning the lens on a laser, since I have air assist on for everything all the time, it's very rare I have to clean a lens. On a diode laser, yeah. Well, even yeah, on a CO2, laser. actually. Well, on my CO2, I have the air assist on, too, but I still have to clean the lens periodically. On the yeah. diode lasers, it's rare I have to, I have to clean a lens. Yeah, dio well, CO2 lasers have a few more optics in them than a diode laser. All of almost all of the the optics in a diode laser are are sealed behind glass. So the thing, if you pull a laser module off and you look at the end of it, the thing you're looking at isn't the lens. It's a it's just a quartz protector. The lens is inside that. So you really just have to scrub that that glass, and that's really all the maintenance you ever have to do on a diode laser, other than belts, of course. Of course, um, in a CO2 laser, aside from the lens itself, you got to watch for dust accumulating on the mirrors. Yeah. And the end of the laser tube. I, I cleaned the end of my laser tube a couple of times, and it was quite dirty, actually. Yeah. All quiet. What about you, Conrad? Uh, so, how, come, how come you don't have a laser? I don't know. Running out of space. I just what? my my latest tool was a new little mini router cable and my um, uh, a coping saw. Jigsaw or uh, yeah, I know the one. Yeah. You, you you could have had mine because mine sits on the floor. Um, <laughs> I never use it. I just picked it up. I I found it on sale on marketplace and I got it in my shop and I. I've been planning to do some work with it. I just haven't gotten there yet. I spend most of my time prepping product for like local markets and stuff. Yeah. I've got two different markets this weekend. And uh, I've been supplying the vendors with shelves and boxes and crates and stuff. There you go. Scroll saw. I, that's the thing. Scroll saw. Thinking. Thank you. Yes. Yes. I, I, I've, I've got one. I, I used it for one project about. 15 years ago and it's sit under it's been under my book under my workbench ever since well it might still get used quite a bit if it's three quarter of an inch or thicker it's not going to get cut on the laser it's going to get cut on the scroll saw yeah i don't i don't cut things that are usually that thick if i am i'm making a cutting board and i'm not going to cut that with a laser anyway yeah the, and it's going to be a free cut for it was to do uh was it um not overlays but um Build boxes and then build some uh, fretwork to go on to the boxes. Like a yeah. like a jewelry box type thing, you mean? A jewelry boxes, mm -hmm. humidors, you know that sort of thing. Fancy empty things. <laughs> Does the lens sensor do a good job telling you when the lens needs to be cleaned? No. <laughs> it's a it's a bit of a gimmick. Just. Put something in your calendar every six months and to tell you to clean your laser, the, the window underneath the laser module. 
I guess maybe I don't know how they they would even run the laser sensor, the lens sensor, unless they're testing how much is reflecting back off the dirty lens. Now, if you're cutting but, leather, you'll want to yeah. check your even using air assist. If you're cutting leather, you're going to want to check it a little more often. Yeah, because that that tends to pollute not just the lens but the air. Yes, cutting leather is terrible. Yes, in inlays, or well, could be marquetry depending on how thick the material is. But uh, that's that's basically what I was intending to do. Um, you know, smaller boxes and humidors and that sort of thing. Yeah. Most, a lot of my product that I do is uh, barrel wood related, um, cocktail smokers, that sort of thing. Mm -mm. Well, you could do uh, uh, a CNC would do probably better for you than a laser anyway. Probably. Engrave and fill it with resin or, or do a, an inlay. Just don't try to cut dovetails with a CNC. I had a question on that this past week. <laughs> I can't get square corners of my dovetails with my CNC. Well, no, you won't because the bit's round. Yeah, yeah you're gonna it's, have... not, it's not a bandsaw, that's why. <laughs> So, yeah, um, and of course, this is the land of pirates, and so I was planning on making like a little barrel wood uh, pirate chests. Oh, yeah, like a toy box. Yeah, pirate toy box. Their, yeah. Everyone has their booty they need to get in there. Uh, not necessarily. You need to have something to create a draft. Yeah, it would work in the winter time, not so much yeah. in the summer. The summer may not work. You may have air coming the other way. Yeah, it's uh, if you're venting, you got to chop a hole in the wall or Driver run vents. it out a window. Yeah, driver vents work real well. That's what I have yeah. in the shop downstairs. Yeah, me too. On the wall on one side of my workshop, I've got three or four of them st sticking on the side of the wall for different things. Well, then up here in the loft, back in the laser room, there's two of them. They're actually mounted in a window with a custom mount, but there's two vents going out there, one for the CO2 and then uh, one I use for the we create on the S1. Yeah, mine, I, I vent directly outside. Hey, glitter farts here. Uh, awesome. Hopefully you're having a good night too. Oh, I have so many projects to do <laughs> and so little time. I have a big watch band engraving order coming now, probably in the next week or so. No, we have an order for a couple of days. We have an order, of course, this is then for our greenhouse. We got an order for 14,000 lavender plants. So I'm going to wow. be just really busy this next week. Well, bring some more. Everybody, yeah. if, if, you, if you don't have any questions, you're not learning. So go out there and try some things. And no question is a stupid question if we don't know the answer. That's something I used to tell my apprentices all the time. If you don't know, it's not a dumb question. Pass me. Yeah. Don't make the mistake and then say, well, I didn't know. Yes. Those sometimes those kind of situations make the news, depending on what it is. Yeah, uh, you're, you're gonna get a I'll tell you, there are some stupid questions. Or you'll end up getting a Darwin Award. <laughs> yeah, says the guy in IT. <laughs> but 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 having interacted with IT sometimes there's stupid answers too. <laughs> Oh, yeah. The inevitable one. Have you have you unplugged it and plugged it back in? Cat's lock. <laughs> well, the best one I like from support is, can you send me a video of it not working? Yeah, that's that's the Creality response. Yeah, I I actually have one of those emails sitting in my inbox. I think that's our border plate re response to a tech question. <laughs> 
Yeah, it, it, keeps, oh, yeah. it keeps the person you didn't want to talk to busy for a while. Yeah. Yep, I won't forget you're in Wisconsin. It still gets warm in Wisconsin in the summertime, though. Yes, it does. It just as warm there as it does here. Although I like to go way up north around Hayward, but I think it's hot up there, too. Yeah, I've, I've yep. heard this expression, too. This only applies yep. to, to politicians, I think. <laughs> it certainly doesn't apply to makers. Cannot cut or engrave. PVC. Vinyl. Yeah, don't, yeah, if you're talking from a safety perspective, PVC is the big one. Um, anything that looks like plastic, except for acrylic. And vinyl, um, you don't want to do. That releases chlorine gas. Um, what they call pleather, which is like artificial leather, that'll create chlorine gas when you cut it or engrave it. And that'll corrode anything metal. Yeah, there's there's not a lot though that other than PVC, that's the worst one. Of course, um, and that was a big question I had. Can I engrave a bullet? Uh, <laughs> I'm like, Just are you serious? Keep it pointed away from you if you're going to. <laughs> and I'm not talking about the shell. I'm talking about a live round. I said, don't even attempt that. Yeah, that just seems like a bad idea. Well, if you do it before see, you see, that's one of those things that'll make the news, right? <laughs> yeah. There's a Darwin Award right there. Mm -hmm. I actually put that in a video here a couple of years ago when the guy asked about it. He says, don't do this. So I don't know the answer to this question. I've never had to clean the webcam in a in a WeCreate. Is this a no, I haven't WeCreate haven't had that. Well, we weren't specifically talking about WeCreate with this one, but but any mm -hmm. webcams, I don't know. I haven't ever had to clean any of them. Uh, the only camera I've ever really had to clean, I've got a, a bamboo uh, X-Carbon, and it has a camera in it, and it gets dust on it. I have to dust it off once in a while. But otherwise, no, my wheat crate, never had to clean that one. No. I mean, if you're cleaning lenses anyway, you might as well just give the webcam a wipe, but... It's uh, it's not something that seems to be bad for collecting dirt. Any any webcams really? Well, no, we create where the uh, camera's located. You know, it, it the fan in there pulls all the smoke away from it. You shouldn't really be getting anything up there. Yeah, the fan. They have a good case fan in those. More importantly, it's quiet. It's not like. Uh, what was the laser case, the laser enclosure I was, uh, I was testing? It might have been the Ikea, uh, the loudest fan I've ever heard. Like, it's, like, louder than, than like, you know, the, the fan in, in the motor of your car. Like, it's just insane. It sounds like a jet engine. And, yeah, it, it would be okay if it actually worked like it sounds, but it just, it's an average fan, so... To clean lenses, I use alcohol. Not the good tequila, but like isopropyl 90. Yeah, take a shot of and, alcohol first and then go clean yeah. the lens. <laughs> um, yeah, isopropyl alcohol, IPA. Um, and uh, something, don't scrub it necessarily. You're not really cleaning the lens. You're cleaning a, a, just a protective optic on the front. But it can still get scratched. So Use a microfiber cloth. Yeah. A new one, not a dirty one you've detailed your car with but a new one yeah with a little alcohol and it'll it'll come clean usually uh it helps to take a flashlight and shine it back into the into the module to make sure that the, you've got the dirt off because it can get cooked on there <laughs> cleaning party yeah <laughs> Yeah, that'll be the, the project for next week. Everybody bring your laser module to the video and uh -huh. to the stream and we'll we'll clean our lenses. Yeah, lens tissue if you've got it. It's it's the it's in usually the the 
the protective glass is in a bit of a pocket, so you can't really get lens tissue in there very well. Q-tip works well. Yeah, except there's a tendency to really scrub with a Q-tip. So if you're using a Q-tip, it's it's a light it's a light rub. Yeah, just remember you're cleaning some optics, not your ears. Yes, well, they're not even technically good for cleaning your ears. <laughs> Yeah. camera shop you can get you can get the the blowers uh, to keep the heavy dust off of things inside your laser just the hand squeezy kind of blowers that are typically used Mo you'll find them in most camera bags but to actually clean it yeah so alcohol is is your friend Yep, I have the same setup. Yep, most people do. The four inch is typically a dryer vent. And I've got a blower mounted right at the window, so it even accelerates what the weak rate fan puts out. So. Yeah, I have I have one, one of those big inline fans for uh, which sits right at the wall where the where the output is, and then I pipe everything into that fan works works really well it actually seems to create a little bit of a vacuum inside the laser which is generally what you want well are we winding down here what do we got 27 we got three minutes left so last chance for questions or if you want us to look at things for the next live stream we can do that uh over the next week I know we all have all kinds of a free time, so <laughs> yeah. There you go, both fans. Yep. I have the same thing down in the shop as uh, whatever fan I have in the enclosure goes into my four-inch vent. It has another inline blower in it that blows it out above the shop door. So that yep, worked great. Stephen, I thought you said you were leaving an hour ago. Can't get enough. No, he he goes and eats dinner and then he comes back. See, so he's on West Coast time. Hey, Grandpa, right. oh, we, we gotta. Oh yeah, this is. Uh... So I actually did a uh, an interview today with the with the Kittle guys. They do a. a coffee with Kittle and they were actually trying to get my perspective on using their tool for from a maker's perspective. So that video is coming out soon if you if you follow the Kittle Kittle group on YouTube. Um, it was just a real kind of warm fireside chat. Uh, what's interesting is uh, Drew, the guy who runs their YouTube channel, uh, he's a maker wannabe. So he's like like most of the people who join our channels uh, he's just getting started and wanted to have he had all kinds of really interesting questions so that one's coming out soon you can feel free to watch that and uh certainly i like kittle as a as a design tool so i actually use it in the real world unlike the the hit and run where you review something and then you never use it again um, it's part of my day-to-day -day workflow Oh, there you go. He can't get enough. My wife says she gets too much. <laughs> That's why I'm in my studio and she's somewhere else in the house. Yeah, Kittle. Kittle's a nice little tool. It's it's so I, I don't know. Well, I guess they I didn't sign an NDA, so I can divulge. Um, one of the things we talked about was after that call was where, where Kittle's going and and I said I re would really like just to be able to draw measurable lines, dimensional lines in in Kittle, and that's apparently coming, which is nice. So a lot of the things that you would use, um, either Lightburn for or uh, or Inkscape, if you're if you're using Inkscape Design, if you want to draw a size, a particular size of something, that's that's all coming, which is which is kind of exciting. 
because it just means it's one less reason to use a tool outside of Kittle, from my perspective, at least. All right, so if anybody has anything else, uh, say it now, or we can wind down for the evening, and uh, hopefully we see you all next week. Yep. Cool. And by all means, uh, ask questions and leave comments in videos, and, and someone will answer you. I know I answer every single uh, message I get, at least as many as I possibly can, and I'm pretty sure Roger does too. So. Yep, it, sometimes it gets a little out of hand, but I still manage to hit them all. Yeah. Just remember not to engrave bullets. <laughs> yes, don't don't engrave bullets. Maybe maybe we need a frequently asked question list of things you should and shouldn't do. Yeah. Don't engrave your sister. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we'll we'll wind down and uh thanks for coming out. Yeah, we'll see you all next week. Take it easy, guys. Thanks, Conrad. Thanks, Roger.